Take a seat. There was an article that I was in in the new paper. I thought it was very well done. You might want to check it out. But one of the little quotes that came out of the interview was um, the question, are Singaporeans too picky? That was the question. Because I said, if you don't want to be in a relationship, if you say you want to be in a relationship but you're not, there's probably three reasons why you're not. Picky, picky, picky. Those are the three reasons. You know? And so I said that, and they put that in the article. But the truth is, it came out of a university, university of Texas study that showed that attractive women want it all. That attractive women tend to want a man who is a gr really fine supporter, a great parent, a great lover, very romantic, and a great parent, sensitive and a great parent. These five things don't come in the same body. <laughs> that you've got to know that this, it's like, it's talk about setting yourself up for failure because the hormones that make you a, an entrepreneur and aggressive and competitive are the very hormones that work against you being a nurtured, nurturing, sensitive, you know, gentle, spirited guy. So you've got to be realistic about your expectations. And by the way, this is one of the challenges for men. Um, problem solving versus talking and listening. This is a problem for men because women, and this is research, women expect men to be like women. Women expect men to be like women. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the brain activity with a functional MRI, if you look at the brain activity of a woman talking, she, her, the pleasure and reward center is lit up like a soccer field. She is having a wonderful time. She has got a dopamine high because women have used talking as a survival strategy more than men. Doesn't mean women talk more than men. That's a misunderstanding. Men talk just as much as women when they feel safe, when they feel connected. Women talk to connect, but men have to connect to talk. That's probably a good take home. Women talk to connect, but men have to connect to talk. If you look at the brain activity of a woman, when she's talking, as I mentioned, she's getting, she loves it. She gets off on it. She enjoys it. She gets high. She gets a dopamine hit from it. She gets energy from talking, okay? Women actually talk in order to connect. That's one of the ways they connect. You notice how women go to the bathroom in groups, you know? They sort of gather in groups, you know, they, and they're talking while they're going. And in the bathroom, you hear all this interesting information, you know, in the bathroom. You don't hear guys giggling and chatting in the bathroom. You know, you don't hear the, you know, that going on. You know, it's pretty quiet, as I'm told. <laughs> if you look at a male's brain when he's talking, it's not that he dislikes it. It's just that he doesn't get high from it. He uses it for practical purposes, not recreation. You know, it's not like a fun evening. You know, so it's, but it doesn't mean he dislikes it. Another thing that's important to remember is that we, because men have been relied upon to provide and protect for us, they are prone to hyperarousal. A, a competitive conversation can get their heart rate up pretty fast, because men are designed to really ready for action, for fight or flight at a moment's notice. We have relied on them to be that way. Their bodies are designed for that. They have bigger blood vessels going to the large muscles, so they're ready for action. They have bigger bone structure than women do, and their brain is designed for focusing and concentrating. So, so for a man, because he's prone to hyperarousal, he wants to avoid those subjects that criticize him or blame him or 
can cause conflict. It's harder to engage a guy because once he gets engaged, he gets a cortisol shock, a hit, unlike women. See, women often, when they're talking, they're feeling good. So if you have a man and a woman together, and they're talking, and, they're, and it gets heated, you know, it becomes a, like a conflict, his cortisol spikes immediately, and it stays in his system a long time before it dissipates. Once a man gets upset and angry, it, his system is flooded with cortisol. Now, cortisol stings. Did you ever have the experience of sitting on a wall and then you jump down and it stings your feet? That's sort of, or sticking your finger in an electric shock, socket and getting shocked? That's sort of what cortisol feels like. When someone scares you or almost hits you in an automobile, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a jolt, it's a shock. Well, when the guy spikes, it's uncomfortable and stays in his system. The woman, women on the other hand, can go along, they say, arguing with, with a woman is like being pecked to death by a duck. You know, she can go along a long time before she spikes, and then the cortisol goes down. So part of this, uh, part of the reason why men often want to solve the problem is because talking and listening is so uncomfortable for them. It's not as comfortable as it is for women, especially if there's a chance he's going to get criticized or blamed. Criticizing a man and blaming him and complaining to him is psychologically painful. If you look at the brain, physical pain registers in the brain just like emotional pain. And emotional pain registers in the brain just like physical pain. Men experience shame pain to a greater degree than women because men have been relied upon, not just in the 21st century, but their bodies, their psyche has evolved for centuries based upon their ability to provide and protect. And when you're unhappy, women, he feels like a failure even if you don't think he's a failure. They want to help you. If women as a group, if you will understand how it pleases a man to please you, women as a group don't really understand how much it pleases a man to please the woman in his life. I mean, if you will just accept that and know that your affirmation, your uh, appreciation, your happiness makes him feel so wonderful. But the point is, because women often say, well, does, you know, does this mean I can never complain to a man? Of course not. But behind every complaint is a desire. Behind every blame is a desire. Behind every criticism is a desire. Behind every judgment is a desire. And women, all we have to do is go straight to the desire. I love it when you pick up after yourself. I love it when you call me two or three days ahead when you want a date. Thank you for coming on time. Instead of saying, you're always late, you know, because every human being responds to criticism the very same way. We defend against it. Men, their primary defense is fight and flight. So when you criticize a man, he shuts down because shame is a stop and hide emotion. Shame makes you want to pull away, get away, and go silent. The silent man is often a man that feels inadequate or like he cannot please you. If you wonder why the man is not talking, because men will talk just as much as women when they feel safe, when they feel appreciated. You can't shut him up. He'll talk just as, literally, research shows that all those studies that used to show, one study was that went around for a long time showed that women use 20,000 words in a day and men use 7,000 words. You know, we now know that's not true. It really isn't true. But the preconditions for talking are different. If a man isn't talking, then he somehow 
is sitting there wondering if he's going to get criticized, blamed, interrupted, corrected, or judged. Because judging and criticizing a man causes more psychological pain than it does for a woman. It's not that we like it. We just don't get the electric shock that he does. So you, there's a limit to empathy. See, we can't judge a man by how we feel when we're embarrassed. Again, it's not that we like to fail or we like to be inadequate, but we haven't been judged for centuries based upon our adequacy in this area. So it's, it's, it's in your DNA. So one of the ways you can improve any relationship at work, at home, in love, is to honor the primary vulnerability of men, which is they're very vulnerable, vulnerable to appearing weak, disappointing you, uh, feeling inadequate, or feeling embarrassed or shamed. For a man, there's only one question, and the question is, does this make me look weak? And if it makes him look weak, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. I really want to congratulate every single man in this room for the chutzpah, the courage, for the manliness to come to this workshop. Because what I, yes, good job, yes, they do deserve, they deserve it, they really deserve it. You're right. Take a seat.